the one-week countdown has begun for the Cassini spacecraft's fatal dive into Saturn's atmosphere. On September 15, Cassini will dive straight into Saturn, collecting in-situ data from the planet's atmosphere and firing it back to Earth in the one to two minutes before breaking apart. The dive will bring a dramatic end to the probe's 13-year tenure in the Saturnian system, where it has unearthed many incredible and unexpected science discoveries. This coming week is filled with activity for Cassini. Check out our complete coverage page for a full schedule of events and how to watch them. Cassini's grand finale at Saturn in pictures on Saturday, September 9th, the probe will make the last of its 22 dives to Saturn's rings, a flight path that has produced some incredible views. This view of Saturn, taken by the Cassini probe, shows the planet's northern hemisphere in 2016. Credit NASA's Occult Tech Space Science Institute on September 11th, Cassini will make its last distant flyby of Saturn's largest moon, Titan. From a distance of 73,974 miles 119,049 kilometers, Titan's gravity will slow down Cassini. This will prove fatal for Cassini. On September 15, instead of skimming the top of Saturn's atmosphere as it has done during its last few loops around the planet, the slower-moving Cassini will dip much deeper into the atmosphere. The probe may reach depths of up to 9,300 miles 15,000 kilometers before breaking apart, according to mission scientists. On September 13 and 14, Cassini's cameras will take the probe's last images of the system, on September 15, starting at 4.37 a.m. EDT 037 GMT, the final plunge will begin as the spacecraft gets into position to sample the atmosphere. Normally, there is at least an hoss long delay between when the probe collects data and transmits it back to Earth, but because Cassini will only be able to transmit for one to two minutes during the final plunge, the probe will send that within two to three seconds of collecting it, Cassini scientists have said. The spacecraft will transmit data back to Earth from eight of its 11 instruments, but it will not have enough bandwidth to send images which require larger data files, which is why the probe will take its final snapshots of the system on September 14. The hexagonal cloud formation in Saturn's northern hemisphere, imaged by Cassini's wide-angle camera on September 9, 2016, using a spectral filter which preferentially admits wavelengths of near-infrared light. The view was obtained at a distance of approximately 750,000 miles 1.2 million kilometers from Saturn. Credit NASA's Occult Tech Space Science Institute Cassini will enter Saturn's atmosphere at 753 a.m. EDT 1153 GMT, and will initially fire its thrusters at 10% capacity to maintain directional stability, enabling the spacecraft's high-gain antenna to remain pointed at Earth and allowing continued transmission of data, NASA officials said in a statement. During the next 60 seconds, the probe will then ramp up its thrusters to 100% capacity in an attempt to keep the spacecraft's antennas pointed at Earth. When Cassini reaches an altitude of about 940 miles 1,510 kilometers above Saturn's cloud tops, communication from the spacecraft will cease, and Cassini's mission of exploration will have concluded, the statement said. The spacecraft will break up like a meteor moments later. The probe's demise was planned by the Cassini team in anticipation of the spacecraft running out of fuel to steer itself around Saturn because the mission will have to end anyway. The researchers decided to take the opportunity to get unique data from Saturn's atmosphere. This image of Saturn's rings was taken in visible light with the Cassini spacecraft narrow-angle camera on January 28, 2016. Credit NASA's Occult Tech Space Science Institute Cassini's destruction will serve another important purpose protecting some of the planet's moons from Earth invaders. Saturn's moons Enceladus and Titan may possess environments that are fit to support life, and if Cassini is carrying bacteria or other miniature life forms from Earth, planetary protection scientists don't want those life forms taking up residence on one of the moons. Just as invasive species on Earth can devastate native populations, an Earth-based life form could overwhelm native life forms on one of Saturn's moons. However unlikely such a scenario may be, its effects would be devastating. The proliferation of an Earth-based life form on an alien moon could also make it harder for humans to identify alien life forms in that location. The Cassini mission has been packed full of scientific firsts, and our unique planetary revelations will continue to the very end of the mission, said Linda Spilker, Cassini project scientist from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, said in a statement from the agency. We'll be sending data in near real time as we rush headlong into the atmosphere. It's truly a first of its kind event at Saturn. Follow Calico Field at Calico Field. Follow us at space.com, Facebook and Google. Original article on space.com.